Hi, it's Steve Hargadon, and welcome to the closing keynote for our Library 2.023 mini conference, Mental Health and Wellness. Our special thanks to founding partner, San Jose State University's School of Information. I'm going to turn the time over now to Dr. Sandra Hirsch and Dr. Anthony Chow. I just wanted to um, uh, say what a great session this um, great mini conference has been so far and how excited we are to have Loida um, give our closing keynote. And um, I've really been delighted with how everything's gone and with the deep engagement that we've had. So I just want to thank everyone for, uh, for that and to Steve for his great behind the scenes efforts um, as well. So I'll turn it over to um, Anthony. Thank you, Sandy. I was just grabbing the link. Uh, so it makes us all smile to see all the positive comments. And so again, thank you for taking the time. I'm going to put a link into the chat. So one of the questions is about the recording. So obviously, if you go to library 2.0, uh, those recordings are there. Uh, and you also see uh, that content uh, at that address at the iSchool. So again, thank you to Steve, the faculty, staff, students, for all of their hard work and putting this together. Thanks to all of you for attending. Uh, and I'll just conclude with saying, essentially health and wellness is important to us all. Those of you in leadership positions, we must make it a priority and we must, uh, I guess, role model, if you will, to, to uh, surface it and also put our time and resources into making sure that occurs. So, and let me, with that being said, uh, I can't wait to hear what Lloyda has to say and thank, thank her again for all of her hard work and, and really putting together this amazing uh, uh, mini conference. Lloyda. Thank you, everyone. <clears throat> and thank you um, to Dr. Chow and uh, Dr. Hirsch and also uh, Steve for the amazing support. Thank you all for joining our event today. And um, the speakers have been wonderful. Um, we truly had an excellent event with speakers from uh, the States and also even the Philippines. Uh, topics included policies, mindfulness, burnout, um, achieving work-life balance, maker spaces um, to prevent burnout. That was interesting. Uh, gardening and staff mental health group and tea, right? That was, that was, I'm a big fan of tea. So we need copious amounts of tea for the body, mind, and soul. So those were very varied topics. And I'm going to share my screen now. <clears throat> Okay. Something is happening. I need to do this again. Okay, yes, we're rolling. <clears throat> well, um, <clears throat> I am delighted to uh, close the event today. Uh, highlighting points uh, from our fantastic speakers, expanding on perceptions of mental health and wellness, and proposing a path forward for librarianship. At the beginning of this event, I mentioned that when we speak about wellness, we speak about health and well being. It is a positive state experienced by individuals and societies. Like health, it is a resource for daily life and is determined by social, economic, and environmental conditions. Well-being encompasses quality of life and the ability of people and societies to contribute to their world with a sense of meaning and purpose. Why do we care about wellness? <clears throat> we have an urgency to act. Since the world faces complex, in interrelated crisis, <clears throat> excuse me, that impacts countries in different ways. Recent pandemics have exposed the fractures in society and highlighted the ecological, political, commer commercial, digital, and social determinants of health and health inequities within and between social groups and nations. There are new diseases there's the urgent need for climate action, attention to biodiversity threats, human rights, 
massive transformation in tech, book bannings, movements to hamper intellectual freedom, intensified paralyzation where we don't agree on facts, higher insecurity, societies are divided, there is general existential dread. Unfortunately, that's what a report from the United Nations says, and that mental health is a top concern for the world. The UN stated that this time of uncertain times and unsettled lives is indeed shaping our future in a transforming world. Mm -hmm. Therefore, responses require investments that integrate planetary, societal, community, and individual health and well-being, as well as changes and social structures to support people to take control of their lives and health. This is a profound change and is considered fundamental, a fundamental redirection of societies, values, and actions consistent with the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Uh, and this is, this is what the actions are required. This agenda is the plan put forward by the United Nations with 17 sustainable development goals to improve the lives and prospects of people, everyone on the planet, to support life on land and below water, as they classify it. And here are the 17 goals. I'm just going to touch on some of them. For instance, uh, good health and well-being. That's goal three. Goal five, gender equality. Goal eight, decent work and economic growth. Uh, goal 13, climate action. And goal 16, peace, justice, and strong institutions. I would like to go over this again that I mentioned earlier because I want everyone to understand the magnitude of the situation from the top. Uh, high level global organizations are promoting well being, wellness, and mental health as intrinsically linked to development. Let that sink in. I am going to say we need people to be on top of the game, to experience well-being, to move our societies and world forward. Therefore, we need our library workers well to move their lives, their families, their society and libraries forward. Library uh, workers have different needs. People can experience threats at work due to people seeking to ban books at the workplace of the person and, and using all sorts of strategies as we've seen to achieve that goal. Or the person has financial needs, needs a job, a, pay, a better pay, has an illness, long-term COVID, someone in their family sick, uh, needs family leave, needs to take a day off from work, flexible schedule one day. Uh, they may not have a home or the housing situations worries them. If they need a car and have no car or their car is broken, uh, not working well. If their heart is broken, if the person experienced discrimination, racism, hunger, or if they need education to um, work the next job. People can very well use relaxation strategies. And these are good, but they need more. The strategies to help them need to be more wholesome, include aspects related to all areas of their lives. For instance, someone with needs for shelter or security perhaps cannot focus on yoga classes like someone without those needs. Therefore, strategies for mental health and wellness must go beyond relaxation techniques. All that's very good but it requires a whole of society approach. And how we can do this? Well, here we have the imperfect Maslow hierarchy of needs uh, from 1943, but still it's a good place to start understanding the needs of individuals. Maslow theory suggests that an individual will fulfill basic needs before moving on to others more advanced needs, right? To reach self-esteem, they will seek to meet basic needs. 
psychological needs, security, safety, esteem, and then culminate at the top with the self-actualization, right? This is what we're seeing, including, um, and I don't put it here, but there are others that Maslow added in 1970, like cognitive, aesthetic, and transcendence. Well, what all of these means for librarianship, now that we have all this information. We have an amazing opportunity to unite forces to support wellness of library workers who are human beings deserving to be treated with dignity and equity, to receive fair opportunities and justice. The wellness of our library workers, our staff members, is reflected in the library operations and the services provided by the libraries or the schools or the organizations. Therefore, a workplace should strive to ensure the wellness of the employees. And we can say that wellness is included in goal three of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals that have been championed by IFA and ALA and many associations around the world. Goal three is about good health and well-being. But I will say that to achieve wellness in this world, we must achieve all the 16 goals. We must pay attention to everything that happens on land and below water. And this will mean that we have achieved development. Individuals and cities are successful. Wellness includes physical, psychological, and social aspects. It includes policies related to working schedules, where employees work, child and elder care, and wages, salaries, because economic insecurity makes it difficult for anyone to experience wellness. Addressing the emotional and invisible labor in fatigue and burnout. It also includes healthy choices. So wellness in the workplace should be rooted in the assessment of needs and research. For instance, and I'm going to mention a um, colleague, Dr. Noah Lenstra, who maintains a website, Let's Move In Libraries, which features examples of wellness for library workers and wellness embedded in library services at academia, public, and school libraries. So check it out. Their response, our response should be to move forward in unity together in a cohesive effort to support wellness for library workers, our field, libraries, and the communities we serve. So it's all goes together, right? It's like a domino effect. The path forward includes support from the top to down. Library administration must support efforts, and I'm glad that Dean mentioned by other speakers, uh, must support efforts towards wellness. And this will encourage managers and library staff in general to support it too. Uh, coordination and planning must include everyone in the library. How will we know what they need if we don't talk to them? Right, that's very interesting. And that's a question for you. The hardest part though is to get started, set the basis, and then we can build on that. For instance, during my national library tour, while I presided ALA, we built on what Dr. Lorene Roy did on wellness when she presided ALA. We revamped the ALA APA, Associated um, Professional Ally Association, wellness site and added information on one of the dimensions of wellness to help library workers manage stress and anxiety. Now, after all those years, there are more and more librarians that are becoming aware that without wellness, we cannot be and we cannot have excellence and, and quality in research, cataloging of materials, indexing, digital transformation in libraries, sustainable libraries, library advocacy, or a strong library field. Or perhaps we could have that, but at what cost? So here are some examples you can adapt to your realities. Hmm. Create a website 
And this is the ALA APA wellness website I mentioned earlier is for library workers include eight uh, levels or dimensions of wellness, um, emotional, environmental, intellectual, occupational, physical, spiritual, social, and financial wellness. That's the last one we added, uh, financial. You can also provide free continuing education, and this can include workshops or webinars about many aspects. And some could be about women in librarianship and wellness, burnout in libraries, salary equity, and accessible library spaces. A specific example, and this was mentioned by one of the speakers during the opening keynote, was the Wellness in Library Workplace a series of four classes, two per week, that we presented um, in collaboration, ALA in collaboration with the National Network of Libraries of Medicine. Very successful. And I think we worked with Bobby Newman on that. If our librarians are caregivers, very stressed out, caring for family, children, pets, we can start supporting them with a seminar. On, uh, with resources for them as caregivers. And the ALA Committee on the Status of Women in Librarianship did that and included library administrators, librarians, and doctors counselors among the speakers. So I encourage uh, you to um, check out this webinar. Um, they also developed a caregivers toolkit and it's specifically for library workers. You can also develop social media, for example, we can find more inspirations on the Mindfulness for Librarians Facebook group administered by Madeline Charney and, and she's a Sustainable Studies Librarian at the University of Massachusetts in Amherst. Expand your library associations conferences. For instance, ALA staff members and I collaborated on a cooking demo, yes, during the conference, where I share um, recipes of vegetable juices and shrimp veggies stir fry on the cooking stage of the ALA annual conference exhibits floor. Also, one of my presidential programs was about how to manage trauma with a doctor counselor providing basic um, and core tools helpful to manage all types of trauma. And ALA currently provides a relaxation room and wellness mentors to help conferences attendees. And you can identify them by the button on their conference ID. Um, the New England Library Association's annual conference has provided a mindful labyrinth, which a person walks through to calm body and mind. ACRL and Oregon um, Washington Joint Conference included schedules walks through the forest overlooking the beautiful Columbia River Gorge. You can also provide wellness resources. And I loved what McQuaid Library did for students and library workers at the Mary Mac College in Massachusetts. The library provided a meditation room, a series of breathing classes to help reduce stress and anxiety, bikes with immersive technology, movie nights about environmental issues, plans for residence halls and offices, you could borrow them, and mindful kids on bird washing, yoga, meditation, chakras, sound healing, creative healing, and gardening. And all that resulted from the assessment of needs uh, on ways to support wellness for staff and students. Write and publish about wellness in libraries. One of my columns was about, during my presidency, was about wellness to encourage workers to immerse themselves in wellness. I also wrote that uh, for IFLA and it featured examples of libraries providing wellness. I'm really curious to know what else is out there. So I'd like to encourage everyone or many of you that are possible um, to publish. ALA Editions and American Libraries Magazine have comprehensively covered kindness, mindfulness, and wellness. So you can uh, search the archives. The Sustainability Roundtable at ALA compiles resources that contribute to advancing a more equitable, 
healthy, and economically viable society. Create a newsletter. The New York Library Association Sustainability Initiative newsletter is full of advice about wellness and the ALA APA Library's Work Life Newsletter includes recommendations for libraries and library workers. Subscribe to it. And on this note, I'd like to recommend a new book published by ALA and it's about fostering wellness in the workplace, a handbook for libraries. And it was written by Bobby Newman. She works um, this was by her, but she also works for the National Libraries of Medicine, and I have collaborated with her over the years. Um, it's also good to recognize, to motivate. So if we are seeing examples of wellness happening in libraries, there are not many visible ones, so it's good to recognize that. During the um, ALA presidency, we established the ALA Presidential Citation for Wellness in the Workplace. And this is now the Sustained Roundtable Citation for Wellness in the Workplace. And the inaugural citation was presented to Richland Library. We had them earlier here. And uh, one thing that really um, caught my attention from that application is that the library worked together with the city to obtain a 28% salary increase for non-librarians, workers, which didn't um, have a salary increase in many years. And so that is also part of wellness. Queens Public Library won the 2022 award and um, you can read more about that on their website. We need a transformative overhaul in thinking, including LIS schools, curriculums, library associations, institutions, organizations. Um, some ideas, not exhaustive, but to get us started. For instance, library school. At San Jose State University uh, High School, uh, we are developing blogs and um, short videos and social media messaging, um, iLibrary resources, um, hopefully more uh, symposiums and observances of international wellness days. Um, but I also want to say that library school can um, consider embedding subject areas in their LIS curriculum, build a block of courses, embedding wellness principles, or try study groups, pilots, you know, see what works, what doesn't. Bring student advisors, wellness resources pages from the university, feature them on your own website, include uh, the university um, own school library dedicated section, in your libraries, a dedication session to mental health and wellness of the workforce. Library associations, well, you can create communities, have a care room, a care ambassador, wellness ambassador, healthcare professionals. Maybe you have a network. Um, the code of ethics is part of all this process and include um, sustainability, applying a social justice lens to business or strategic planning, planning and have committees and to look into recommendations and guidelines, human rights violations, widespread hate towards individuals and vulnerable groups that is reflected in, in the services, right? The collections, all that we've been currently also attacked in some places. Support white papers that libraries and institutions will use to guide their own mental health and wellness efforts. And overall, I do want to encourage um, associations to support a large groups of library workers that are concerned with the well being of the profession. We got to be united. And lastly, uh, institutions, organizations, libraries, all what I mentioned applies, but I have a question for you. If you are part of the local government structure, what is feasible within your local government laws and regulations? Go to the books be informed. And if you are autonomous, what is feasible and which policies you need to reform to support mental health and wellness for your library workers? So that's homework for you. What is the path forward? Um, and what was once feasible is now reachable. Well-being is the outcome of policies. 
institutions, economies, and ecosystems in which people live. It requires a whole of society approach involving actions across all levels, stakeholders and sectors, from communities and within organizations to regional and national government. So it's complex, yes. But my call is to work in concerted action to cohesively bring change. And the way forward is for libraries, LIS programs, professional associations, institutions, and organizations to come together and partner with civic organizations, academia, businesses, local governments, and a variety of organizations depending on the needs to work decisively in implementation of strategies for health and well being to make the well being of library workers a reality. And by doing so, we are also contributing to the well being of our societies. So we help each other. And like we heard today, mental health and well being depend on the actions of everyone in society. And so this will drive the transformation towards well being policy uh, societies in all countries, right? We want a better world. Leave no one behind, which is crucial for equitable societies and for sustain, uh, sustainable development too. And like I said earlier, our efforts to have a domino effect from local to global. And it sounds aspirational, but it is practical too. And it's all based in principles of global solidarity. Everything is connected. If we can identify it, we can tackle it through a wellness lens. Everyone's rights lead the way, equity. By supporting equality, we can unlock the potential for people to thrive today and tomorrow. And we need to create these policies that actually deliver for people. Work together to tackle challenges. We all have a part to play and we cannot afford to build back the same. So we need policies for physical, psychological, and social aspects in the workplace. Policies related to working schedules, working spaces, library workers, caregivers, and wages, salaries. Policies to address transparency, ethics, openness, equity, diversity, and inclusion. And think of uh, the intangible return of investment. As Cherney has said, dedicated space and resources for library workers' wellness are an expense, but we must think about the intangible return on investment for our library community as we face catastrophic climate and social chaos. So making these tools accessible to our library workers will help all of us, our libraries and the communities we are serving. So in order to truly support wellness for library workers, we need to leave no one behind, include everyone in your planning. We must change paradigms. This is a very important area. We can support the wellness of library workers, we should support it. Promote policy transformation and library or city policies for employees. Support multi-sectoral alliances to bring efforts to, to fruition. Embrace efforts as a multi-dimensional processes and secure a seat at the table where policies are discussed to show the value of our proposals. The values of libraries, yes, because advocacy is very important. Advocacy within the library city or, or city administration, advocacy for the library, for the employees. I recommend to operate center in empathy. Let's see if we can move that to empathy. Yes. And all of these will help us to reveal a just and equitable society by bringing wellness, concepts and principles into everything we do. We contribute to a just and equitable society. And we are part of that society that can be transformed by these principles. So in conclusion, we need to position libraries as key leaders, key central contributors in wellness and well-being of communities, states, and countries. During the launch of the UN 
Human Development Report, the top global concern was mental health, I mentioned. The role of culture in getting the world out of this mess was highlighted. And they said there are many people experiencing an inability to project themselves into the future, to produce a narrative into what is our future. But there are elements such as comedians, entertainment, scientists, and education on trans population that are promoting the kind of narrative that transform lives, that can help the world to get out of the mess it is, it is in. But libraries were not mentioned. And every day, libraries help people to pro project themselves into the future, to produce a narrative of how their future will be. And we are doing that with our library workers too. We are the library too. So libraries are helping the world to get out of the mess it is in. And libraries can and should help its workers too. So I hope you are inspired because this is a short talk as I am to continue developing wellness strategies for library workers, libraries, our profession, and also the communities we serve. And thank you all for attending this talk. I hope you go out and do good. Thank you, Loida. Thanks to San Jose State. We hope that you've enjoyed the conference. Have a great week and weekend coming up.